Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. You might have seen me doing so many tutorials on structural bioinformatics, drug designing, Gromax, quantum physics, siesta, etc. Some of my subscribers told me that why not do some tutorials on R programming and Python programming as well for bioinformatics analysis. So I thought of, uh, you know, start uh, by making some uh, tutorials on R programming, uh, especially R programming for bioinformatics. So today we are diving into an exciting and incredibly useful topic in the world of data science and bioinformatics that is R programming. So basically what we are going to do is we are going to use different packages from Bioconductor and we are going to install many Bioconductor packages which are uh, useful for bioinformatics analysis such as RNA sequencing, single cell RNA sequencing, even proteomics analysis, mass spectrometry analysis, etc. But uh, one thing that I would like to say, recently I have watched so many YouTube videos where they tell you about how to set up our environment and how to uh, use the packages in a, in a specific environment so that you can transfer to another computer or maybe later on if you want to try those packages those packages uh, will be stored in your R environment and you can use it uh, anywhere uh, in, in, in any operating system. But uh, there are some limitations uh, in doing that uh, that might cause some inconsistencies in using those packages and or, uh, you know, utilizing those packages for bioinformatics analysis. So I thought of doing uh, tutorials on one of the best packages that R has developed recently that is called Quarto package. And this is one of the best for documentation, reproducible research, whether you are a seasoned data scientist or student or someone interested in, in uh, reproducible research and technical publishing. So you will find this Quarto tool very uh, you know extremely helpful so quarto is an amazing tool that integrates seamlessly in r allowing you to create high quality reports presentations and even interactive websites as well it's a game changer you don't have to set up our environment or you don't have to uh, go for um, downloading the specific uh, packages from bioconductor and use uh, it uh, when you when you shift to another operating system or maybe later on if you want to utilize those packages uh, that might not be optimal if you use uh, I mean you can use our environment but sometimes it might cause uh, some problems so so the R community has developed this best uh, one of the best packages that I've ever seen that is called Quarto package where it can create your uh, R environment automatically. You don't have to do anything. And it can uh, render the documents very nicely, very neat and clean, so that um, your colleagues, your students, or your professor can read the documentation and uh, start analyzing all the, uh, you know, start analyzing uh, the data, the bioinformatics data. So, by the end of this video, you will have a solid understanding how to set up a Quarto project from scratch, how to write, render documents, and some best practices to make your projects stand out. I'll walk you through every step of the process, ensuring that you can follow along regardless of your experience level. So, if you are a beginner, if you are an expert, you can follow my tutorial that will be extremely helpful uh, for you guys. So for the later development of the advancements, I would recommend everyone to have some basic statistics knowledge because we are uh, going to dive into many different packages in R and we'll be covering mostly all the aspects of DSEC2, STARS, you know, single cell uh, sequencing packages. Next flow, we'll be covering variant uh, calling and even mass spec, proteomics, maxquant, lima, uh, DEP package, you know, all those things. 
So we'll be mostly using biconductor packages and uh, different R environments as well. So we'll be using Quarto for the for our documentation, and uh, you know this will be incredibly helpful for you guys uh, to understand the concepts of R and uh, yeah. So if you like my videos, if you have not subscribed to my videos, please like, share, comment, uh, and subscribe to my channel so that I can make this kind of uh, tutorials for you. And I hope you like it. Thank you. So let's begin. So the first thing that you want to do is you have to visit this particular website where you can download um, the R and the R Studio. If you click on this link, it will be redirected to this particular link where you can download R for your specific operating system for Linux, for Mac OS and for Windows. I am using Mac OS, so I will be downloading this one. So I have already installed uh, R for my Mac. Okay. So after installing R, then you go for the install R Studio option uh, for your operating system. I have already downloaded the R Studio for Mac OS. Uh, and this will install the latest version uh, of our studio which contains different kinds of tools and uh, latest packages okay so once you install this so we'll be covering uh, the quarto documentation this is the website I'll, I'll put the link in the description so this is the quarto documentation uh, this is uh, one of the best technical and reproducible documentation for scientific uh, purposes. Uh, in our case, it's for bioinformatics analysis. This not only works for R, but also for Python, Yulia, and other different, uh, uh, you know, softwares. It has also a VS Code extension as well. And if you want to uh, get started with the Quarto project, you can click this guide option and using R, and you can see um, different types of examples how you can set it up and what all things that you require uh, for this to have a nice presentation or documentation for your project. Okay, so let's dive into our studio. Uh, so this, this is the graphical user interface of our studio. Many YouTube tutorials uh, I have seen and they start with creating a file called our script. Okay, so whenever you start a project, they, they tend to create our script and they write the code over there and they, uh, you know, execute those command in the console. But we are not going to do that. We are going to set up a project directory first and then we run all the analysis. So before delving into setting up a new project directory, I would like to tell you about the R Studio background uh, information. So this is the graphical user interface where it it has a console, it has uh, environment, and it has another file directory. Uh, so all the plots that we'll be generating uh, will be displayed over here. These are the packages that have been already installed or have been loaded into your R uh, environment. Um, those packages have been listed over here. The help option is best uh, we can we can uh, get into this when we try to run a calculation uh, uh, using uh, our studio packages i can tell you how you can look into the help documentation over here and then the viewer option is for the documentation uh, if you have a pdf or a word document and this is the viewer uh, option where you can render all your you know codes uh, etc and this is for the presentation purposes okay so this is the environment and the commands that you are going to execute over here will be displayed over here i'm going to clear this out okay all the history of all the commands that you have executed uh, this is the connection tab if you have a server connecting to our studio server then you can utilize this connections uh, option and these are the basic tutorial option you can you can learn uh, from by clicking here okay so the basic thing that we focus is console uh, the environment and the files and packages and the plots and in here you have the console where your R code will run 
and you have the option of terminal as well like you open uh, CMD terminal in Windows and Mac OS terminal so basically you can execute the commands over here as well so this will act as your terminal inside our studio okay and if you are running some analysis that requires some background jobs uh, background running jobs so it will be displayed over here okay so now i'm going to tell you some of the basic setup of uh, our studio so first thing first what you want to do when you install our studio and open this particular environment is go to the tools option and then go to global options first okay if you want a dark background like the theme that i have installed uh, or if you like a light background if first you go to the appearance option and here uh, the option editor theme you can select any type of themes that you uh, need so these are the themes i have installed externally but uh, you can choose whatever the themes you like you can set the font size i have set the font size to 12. the default font is monaco which is the default one for our studio you can choose whatever you like uh, there are many options Arial, roboto or whatever the fonts that have been installed on your pc will be displayed over here you can zoom it and uh, you can select the theme uh, as well okay the next thing that you want to go is the general option where you want to work so generally what i do is i basically set up the home directory because it's the best uh, you know option to run any kind of uh, this type of programs from the home directory itself so for the mac os uh, is the best uh, uh, you know option to choose the home directory and you run different types of packages uh, from there or your bioinformatics analysis from there okay then you go to the code option and here there's a option called display where you can highlight different types of uh, uh, options like selected word selected line line numbers etc and um, if you want to you know make it fancy for your R studio so this uh, this is the option where you can modify uh, based on your choice rest of the things we don't want to touch right now oh yeah there's also another option called pen pen layout uh, this is the default one they have four columns one is source console environment and these files plots and packages but you can set up as per your wish okay once you set uh, once you select different options then click on apply and then okay the next thing that you want to do is set up a new project okay so for that what you want to do is go to the file option go to the new project and uh, create a new directory or uh, do it from your existing directory so i'm going to create a new directory and then in here you don't want to select any other options like our package shiny application quarter you don't want to select anything just new project okay and give a directory na name something like bioinformatics analysis so you can see that i have given this underscore option so all the bioinformaticians out there the, uh, all, all the data science specialists those who are working uh, on file namings they always for the multiple words they always uh, you know put underscore in between so that if you want to access it from the terminal then it will be easy for you to access this um, although you can also uh, you know don't want to set up uh, capital letters you can just set up uh, uh, small letters uh, for your analysis purposes so this will be the directory i'm not choosing this option because we are not uh, delving into the git repository if you have a git repository and if you want to submit your uh, r analysis uh, over to github or something then you can click this option for now i'm not clicking it uh, we are not uh, going to use that for now but we are going to uh, use the r environment with this this option is crucial because whatever the packages that you are going to install in this particular session uh, will be locked uh, in this uh, project okay now then create project and uh, you can see that the files the required packages uh, will be installed here and you can see over here your folder has been created 
or your project has been created such as bioinformatics uh, analysis okay and also you can see that automatically all the files will be created over here one is our profile your R project your R environment where all the packages will be installed and your R env dot lock means the the version of the packages that you are going to install will be locked in this particular uh, directory or in this particular project okay the next thing that you want to do since we are going to talk about quarto project the next thing that you are going to do is uh, click here this option plus option and then go for the quarto document you don't want to select any other options uh, there are many options for our html you know python script um, r markdown r notebook but i would recommend all of you to go for quarto document because it's easy and uh, the visualization is uh, much more um, impressive i would say so go for the quarto document you give uh, some title uh, over here since we are going to do one project here so let me uh, just name it as project one and author is my name so title is project one and you can select HTML option you can select PDF and you can select word as well but I'm going with the HTML because you can share the link with anyone PDF uh, it might or might not work you know, if they have installed something some other version but HTML works for any kind of for mobile viewing uh, any any kind of browser uh, it will work if you want presentation then you can go for the presentation like PowerPoint over here you can go for that and the basic engine that you are uh, working uh, the are uh, the bioinformatics analysis that you are going to do so the default one is NITAR NITAR is for the R and if you are writing Python course then it will be best to choose the Jupyter uh, version so we are going with the uh, neat R and here it is automatically selected which is use visual markdown editor I'm going to tell you what is visual markdown editor okay now you create this so this particular uh, you know thing will pop up where uh, it has written that the title the author and the format is HTML the editor is visual so there are two options one is source one is visual if you click on source then uh, it will it will show you all the you know uh, um, uh, what I can say is uh, all the codes that you are using for instance if you see the difference over here for the visual you can see that you just have to put the curly braces over here but if you click on source you have to put this uh, particular character and then only it will run so this is the basic difference between our script and quarto documentation because it makes easy to write like you are writing in your word or notepad or something like that so it, it properly documents everything so I would recommend everyone to uh, install this uh, not install this to utilize uh, the visual uh, markdown code and it will run perfectly and in here you can see that these options uh, are here I mean this is these are the headers so you can also put some headers and it can show uh, all the headers uh, over here so this is your basic chunk where you write your code and this is the execute options so if you click on here it will be executed you can see one plus one is two so it's perfectly executed and you can set up eco false where you don't want your output to be displayed over here but I would not uh, rather you know uh, say that don't uh, use this echo option uh, it should be there otherwise uh, it will be very uh, not difficult but uh, for the basic purpose of analysis to know what is going on uh, you can have a clear um, documentation of that okay so as you can see here you can execute the code right so uh, the next option uh, that you want to look into is this render option so whatever you write over here if it is executed successfully then only the render option will work 
otherwise it will run into problem so basically before clicking on the render you have to execute the code perfectly and then only you can go for rendering options and then it will be rendered okay you can click this option that uh, if you are writing some code and if you save it it will be automatically rendered so that i don't recommend because every time you save it will be rendered it will take time if you have a big project big files so it's it's very difficult if you render on save okay so if you click on render okay here uh, it, it says uh, what is the file name so let me project one dot qmd qmd is a quarto markdown file so any md files is the markdown files so this is basically the extension qmd means quarto markdown files okay so when you execute that it will say that uh, some of the packages are not installed okay so these packages you have to install so what you can do is you copy this install.packages and go to the console okay so the basic command is install.packages and within the double quotes you write the package name it will be installed yes click the option yes so it will be installed okay now you click again this render option and in the background it will tell you whether it will be successfully executed or not now you can see that you have another error that there is no package called r markdown so what you can do is you can copy this okay go to the console over here execute you know the same command install.packages but within the double quotes you change the option to r markdown yes and you can see that all the packages that is required to render this quarto document will be installed so now you click on render documents in the background jobs it will you can see that yeah it's now executed and you can see the html file has been created and it can show up on your browser so whatever you do some changes uh, uh, in in quarto documentation it will be displayed over here you can see the codes have been here and this is the output um, you can add options to executable code like this because the next the, the, the previous code that we have shown here that they don't want to show this they just only uh, showed you um, the output so you can just you know don't use this and try to try to render it now you can see that your file uh, will be created and you can see uh, your code as well so two into two is four okay so this is how the quarter documentation works or the rendering option works now and this is the option to clear your console you can clear this okay so now we are going to uh, do one specific bioinformatics project and that i mentioned uh, initially that this is not a tutorial for uh, doing some basic calculations in r but rather we start with bioinformatics uh, projects okay for that what we need to do is we need to install some of the packages from bioconductor okay let me uh, do some modifications over here so let's give the title fast q uh, analysis okay because we are uh, going to do some, we, we are going to download some FASTQ files and then we analyze uh, the metrics of this uh, FASTQ file. A simple project, which is the basic one for any next generation sequencing specialist, okay? So it will be uh, FASTQ analysis. And remember all these titles and the author should be in the double quotes the format the editor it should not be in the double quotes otherwise if you write anything on double quotes it will be displayed uh, during the rendering option okay so you can read the documentation how you can you know modify uh, how to make it um, impressive uh, for your visualization purpose you can read the documentation but these are the basic requirements okay so in here what you can do is you can change uh, fastq uh, file okay fastq file or fastq or here you can say read 
the fastq file something like that so th these are the headers the headers will be displayed uh, like the headers and below that you have the contents uh, to to write so so let me write here we have downloaded fastq file and uh, try to load in r by downloading some packages uh, from bioconductor basically these are the documents so you have seen in many editors that um, if you have to write something um, you know any any comment then you have to put hash otherwise uh, um, the, the the code will not be executed it will throw an error but one of the good thing about this quarter document is you can write like you are writing in your word file so which is pretty cool right so this is the advantage of quarter documentation not with the R script or not with any kind of editors but this is the most uh, helpful option okay now uh, we can download some packages and then uh, you know run some course or uh, load the fastq fastq file and do some metrics oh, blah blah okay so we will be uh, doing some qc metrics uh, for fastq okay and this is the chunk so this chunk you can uh, actually if you want to install something over here if you want to write some code because you are downloading some packages from bioconductor uh, what you can do is here you go to the insert option there is an executable cell and you can click this uh, r option or uh, you can uh, use option command and then i that will be for the mac uh, I think for Windows it will be Alt, um, I think Control and I, I guess. I don't know about Windows, but uh, maybe that will be the option. So you can, but uh, you can go here, insert, and then insert the R executable. You don't want to, in, you know, put some any other code, but only the R executable, right? So now, for the basic analysis of FastQ file, we are going to download something uh, from uh, uh, website uh, from any any website so fastq file download you just write in the google and here you find some uh, fastq files i'll put the link in the description so we'll we'll check with this 2.4 mb fastq file we just download this one i have already downloaded this file okay fastq file and i named it uh, renamed it to uh, sample.fastq okay and remember once you download this you have to keep in the directory where you are running so um, here you can uh, paste your sample.fastq file because in this directory uh, you have to put all the raw files that you are going to analyze and then uh, you can run your analysis okay good the next thing that you want to so you have downloaded the file from here and in order to read this fastq file you require uh, some uh, some packages some packages uh, from bioconductor or something okay so what you are going to uh, for, for this fastq file analysis one of the packages that you require is short uh, read and just type bioconductor okay short read bioconductor the first link and you have to, to install the package uh, you can uh, copy the code from here and then uh, install it so if you copy this code and go to the r chunk over here and then you execute this okay and then it will tell you the option okay now you can see the package uh, will be installed so it's a it's a package that is required to um, read uh, sequencing files such as fastq files so it is one of the most popular packages that every ngs analyst they use it and in, in in our analysis also we are going to use this package to read the fastq file and do some metrics on fastq file uh, input and manipulation
okay so you can see it it will take some time uh, so I'm just making it a little bit smaller okay now you can see the package will be installed so also you need another package uh, so until this is uh, executed we can go and we can write uh, okay it's getting executed now you can see that when you install this package so if you set the echo to false these things will not be displayed okay but it's a it's a good practice that you look into uh, the the code that you are running what are, what are the things that are being installed and what kind of packages that you are you know installing and blah blah so yeah it's a, it's a good option you keep it on for now and while rendering what you can do is you can switch it off and then you can render it okay so the next package that you are going to install is you go to another chunk uh, and you install the package called ggplot2 so in here you can also search ggplot2 is for the plotting purposes okay oh it's uh, so many options so what you can do is you go to the install no not this one I think here you can write ggplot2 bioconductor oh sorry the ggplot2 has been in, uh, integrated into uh, cran packages so the basic command would be any packages that you want to install from the cran environment is install dot packages and you click on ggplot2 okay and then you execute uh, this code you can see that it will be automatically downloaded from the cran uh, mirror and it will be installed okay now now so now uh, the two packages that we require uh, to read the fastq files have been installed if you want to you know minimize the code you can just click this one Oh, sorry uh, here this one this option uh, this option means it goes into the next code okay and uh, you can uh, just minimize uh, this one so these are the first two codes that we have um, installed so basically the uh, command would be install the required packages okay downloading some packages so these are the two cores that you need to install now what you can do is you start by loading the fastq file so the fastq file that we have downloaded is uh, from this uh, particular website i can put the link in the description so i named it to sample.fastq okay so uh, in order to load the fastq file uh, first uh, what you have to do is you have to load the library so library and then short read okay library short means it will uh, automatically load this library now also you want ggplot2 ggplot2 so it's a good practice to load all the libraries that you have installed at the first instance so that you don't have to inst uh, you know load it again and again uh, during the code execution so it's a good option that you first load all the packages required for your bioinformatics analysis and then move on for the code uh, execution okay so you load these two packages which is required to read fastq files now now read uh, the fastq file okay so since i'm since I'm working from the directory where my fastq file is here, you can see that sample.fastq file is here. So what I can do is I can uh, go for uh, a variable such as fastq file, okay? And uh, then your fastq sample, sample.fastq, okay? So the, uh, so the variable is fastq file and you load the fastq file from there so if you 
execute this, you can see that in your environment, the sample.fastq will be uh, installed. And you can see the file size. I mean, it, it depends uh, whether you are working in a new environment or something, but uh, this will be loaded in this particular environment, uh, global environment. Okay, sample.fastq. So if the file is not displayed here, that means it's not loaded here. So the file has to be displayed in the environment and then your file is loaded. So basically we have loaded the file uh, in the variable called fastq file. Okay, now you need to read the fastq file. So, so that's why we have uh, installed this package called short read. So it has a function that is called read fastq. So the data that we are reading this fastq files will be uh, stored in another variable. So let me just write fastq data and then uh, read fastq you uh, sorry read faster or read fastq okay this is the option or this is the function from this package which can read your fastq file so if you click this and your uh, uh, variable so it should be fastq uh, file okay so if you click this one so you can uh, select and then command and enter so your file will be loaded if you click this chunk the whole thing will be executed if you select any of the you know uh, if you if you put the cursor on then click uh, command and enter I think in Windows it should be control and enter uh, so that particular line will be executed this particular if you select this line and you want to execute this particular line you put the cursor over here or maybe over here or select it and then run you can see that all the uh, the, the course that you have written in that chunk will not be executed but that particular line will be executed now you can see that your fastq data has been read by this function called read fastq and your data has been loaded okay now, what you want to do is, uh, let me just delete this. Okay, so the next chunk, what you want to do is, uh, you want to um, read uh, the quality scores. So for that, what you need is, uh, because uh, in here we are manipulating the FASTQ files, and we try to predict the quality scores of the fastq file okay so i give a variable name called quality scores okay and then load this fastq data as a matrix and to do that uh, the the basic syntax of uh, writing any or loading any file into a matrix is as and then you click on quality Okay, you put, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, braces or the brackets and then quality is the function from the short read function from the short read uh, library. So as quality and then you load your fastq data, fastq uh, data. So one of the best option in our studio is it can tell you, um, uh, it can help you to know what type of code that you are going to write and uh, if the files are loaded it can display all the file names so if you click here fastq and then you keep on the score you can see that many options have been uh, there so you can actually explore the options what you want to do what type of things that you want if you want to load a file or if you want to load the data load a matrix etc so you can see that you can uh, load the fastq data over here and then you want to load it as a matrix so we keep the option called matrix so automatically it will uh, show you different types of option because we are uh, going to uh, load the data as a matrix okay so yeah now if you execute the code sorry it, it should be in uh, double quotes okay so in here, uh, you have this quality score um, variable where you load the FASTQ, FASTQ data and you want to predict the quality. So if you execute this code, you can see that your quality scores have been 
uh, loaded in the environment okay it's executed perfectly so now we move on and uh, also we insert another block now oh, we need to calculate the uh, basic statistics okay here you can calculate the basic uh, statistics so for that we need to uh, develop uh, something uh, that is called uh, an algorithm to to read the quality scores and then predict uh, the uh, statistics for each base inside the fastq file okay so for that i'm going to uh, give a variable such as n base because we don't know how many bases are there so we just create a variable called n base and then each row n row is each row of those fastq data or the quality scores that has been uh, implemented just now that we implemented here as a matrix file we have to read the rows of those uh, quality scores so it should be quality and then scores Oh, I just named it quality okay doesn't matter I mean you can name it so instead of quality I, <laughs> I, I gave the name quality my mistake my bad okay so n base n row uh, you know quality score then uh, you want to store these uh, statistics in a data frame that's how the r works because r is mostly dependent uh, if you have a large file large matrix or a large excel file or csv file the r can read those data as a data frame always you know the data frame is the most important aspect of uh, this r code basically so what do you need to do is now quality and then stats okay because you need some statistics because we are performing the statistical analysis over here so quality <coughs> stats and then data dot frame sorry data dot frame because everything we need in the data frame so it will be first will be position you can see this this option has been automatically uh, you know shown because this is from the ggplot2 package okay you can press f1 for any kind of help that you require where or what you are doing okay so this is from the ggplot2 where we define the position is equal to one uh, colon n underscore basis okay so I'll tell you what, what does this mean. So n basis that uh, the, the first line of code that we have assigned over here is the number of rows in the quality scores matrix. In the context of FASTQ data, each row corresponds to a specific base position across all reads. So n basis represents the total number of base position covered by the reads. Okay. The next option, uh, the quality stats, what uh, we are going to do is we are uh, generating a data frame from the position one to n basis to, to the uh, n number of basis. Okay. And then you click comma and then if you click enter, if you, if you want to write uh, a, a very big chunk of code and you don't want to write in one line. So if you click comma and then enter it will automatically show you uh, it will automatically intend I mean this is how the R code uh, works okay so this block of code creates a data frame called quality stats with four columns one is position you know you, you go from starting position one to the end basis next is the median okay next is the lower and one is the upper percentile okay let me tell you the position one colon n basis this creates a sequence from one to n basis and assigns it to the position okay because the position is the 
uh, you know kind of a function that we are using from ggplot2 because we need to plot uh, that particular uh, command as well so it it, it, it creates uh, or it takes up uh, this kind of uh, functions from a different packages okay so each number in this sequence represents a base position in the reads the next thing that we are going to define is median so that's why I initially I told that you need to learn some of the basic statistics in order to do some bioinformatics analysis okay next thing uh, we are going for the median and there is a function called apply okay and this apply you can see this is a basic uh, a function to manipulate any kind of data frame okay so in here what you say you define the quality uh, sorry I mistake Q U L A quality yeah quality score because I defined it wrong over there so quality scores okay that is one starting from the one and then you have the function of x okay and then median of x i'll tell you what i'm doing and i dot r n is equal to true so basically what this uh, code uh, does is this line calculates the median quality score for each base position the apply function is used to apply the median function to each row or the base position of the quality scores matrix and this narm true is used to ignore any type of na values um, in the in the in the calculations or in your fastq file itself okay so now what you can do it okay now what you can do is you put the comma and then you have another line of code where you um, create this particular lower quartile or the 25th percentile and then you create the 75 percentile which is the upper version and this this is the lower version okay so the next command is lower is equal to again the apply because it can read from quality scores okay starting from the one and then your function that is x okay and this is quantity that one uh, the first one is the median this is the 25th percentile so the command will be x and then probes will be 0 0.25 because you are doing this 25th uh, percentile okay to find the value below which 25th percent of the data fall okay and in here also you have to set up an a <coughs> dot rm is equal to true right so this is for the um a lower and then you have to define the upper again the same but uh, i'm just copying this one but it is for 75th percentile so in here you write uh, 75 right and you close the brackets So now uh, the code is complete so basically what it does is uh, i'm going to explain it again so this chunk of the code creates a data frame quality stats okay with four columns such as position the median the lower and the upper the position one to n basis this creates a sequence from one to n basis the number of bases in your fastq file and assigns it to the position column each number in this sequence represents a base position in the reads now you apply the median with the uh, which calculates the median quality of the uh, median quality score for each base position the apply function is used to 
apply the median function to each row or the base position of the quality score matrix. Okay, NARM is to ignore any type of NA values. Similar to that, you set up the lower where you calculate the 25th percentile that you set up here 0 0.25 and the upper is for the 75 uh, percent of the, the this is the value below which the 70 percent of the data fall now you execute this particular chunk of code let's see oh it says n basis oh here sorry it should be n base because i defined here n base okay now you execute this code and you can see that the code has been executed successfully. So now we have performed the statistics of our uh, FASTQ file. So next thing that you want to do is you want to plot this by using the ggplot2 function. Okay, now plot the data, something like that. Then you create another chunk R. And then the basic function is ggplot. You, you might find different options for this ggplot. You can design absolutely beautiful, absolutely, you know, ready to, you know, publish those kind of figures by using ggplot too. So what we have to load is here the quality stats because in here we have created this quality stats where it contains all the median, lower and upper uh, percentile so we give quality stats okay and then AES means aesthetics for ggplot2 so we give x is equal to uh, position so the x values is the position because one to n basis is the position of your uh, basis okay and then plus so ggplot2 has a typical uh, type of uh, characteristics uh, feature where you define the code not with the comma but plus okay so you define the geome line because you there are many different options for uh, defining or uh, you know painting your plot so i'm using line option over here where Again, I'm setting the aesthetics where my Y score will be the median score. Okay, median score. And then uh, the color, uh, let me put it as um, something yellow. Okay. So again, plus, again, I, I want to make some changes. Now the geom ribbon where a s uh, will give you y minimum is equal to lower so this will tell you 25th percentile the the part where 25 percent of the data that fall and then uh, your upper value so y minimum will be the lower okay and y max will be your 75th uh, percentile then you set up alpha is equal to 0 0.2 and then uh, you fill it up uh, with color green for instance okay again i want to make some more uh, options so theme i'm going to use a minimal theme And if you have done something wrong in your code, it will automatically show this. I mean, this is the uh, you know best feature of R Studio that while writing the code only, it will say you that uh, this code has some error. So my error is instead of uh, you know equal to, I gave um, what do you call the dash. So I put equal to, and this uh, wrong will be vanished. It will say that okay, it's it's correct. Okay, so I'm uh, using theme minimal because I don't want to make it uh, messy. And you can define, you can, uh, 
name it uh, name your x uh, axis and the y axis by using xlab function xlab and then uh, you can uh, define uh, whatever you want to uh, put in so I, I write position in read as base pairs okay so plus and then uh, y lab on the y axis i put something uh, called quality scores quality score sorry okay uh, and also the title of the plot so the title of the plot should be gz title this is the function that uh, tell you so per base sequence quality okay so this is uh, the plotting function of ggplot2 to plot the quality statistics of your fastq file so if you execute this particular code you can see that your plot has been nicely uh, generated over here okay so let me just change it to blue or something so that and uh, this one to red maybe okay. yeah now you can see uh, this is per base sequence quality that, that's your title this is the y axis that is your quality scores that you defined over here this is uh, the x axis title that you define x lab okay and you plot the scores as a median values in in blue color and your upper percentile and the lower percentile you define by using red color or maybe i make it to green yeah something like this okay so this is how you can manipulate uh, fastq files and uh, you don't have to install any other tools such as fastqc uh, for that but you can analyze in R and you have the code so the best thing about running the codes and uh, knowing what you are doing what kind of bioinformatics analysis that you are doing is to execute line by line code and then understand what you are doing for instance uh, you take this chunk of code uh, if you do it in fastqc it will automatically generate a HTML file and it will show you you know different kinds of uh, very impressive plots but you don't know what you are doing and what you have done uh, what is the um, basic algorithm yet i mean of course you can read the documentation but when you do it you know it that's that's my uh, you know take uh, from this analysis okay so now since we have uh, done this read the fastq files and uh, uh, define quality scores or something you, you write as a header okay this is uh, what you have done uh, until now now the codes have been executed really well now you can render the option so if you if you render it if your course have been executed perfectly so it will show you a progress bar that uh, it, it depends on your you know length of the code I mean the uh, files or uh, how big is your code and how big uh, are your files those things uh, will take time uh, if your code is you know if you have heavy files in, in that so here the HTML file has been created and if you click here open in editor or sorry open in uh, browser you can see a very nice report uh, of the analysis that you have done uh, in here will be uh, popped up over here you see install the required packages we have written the code and you can see these packages have been installed and then you have installed the ggplot2 uh, load the fastq file do some metrics library short read you can see the code has been loaded then you uh, loaded the ggplot2 here you read the files here you define the quality stats and you can see uh, while uh, reading from here it was a little bit uh, you know confusing that how it should look you know something like that but when you see in the HTML file it 
exactly it looks really nice okay and then you plot the data and along with the plot it will uh, show up uh, over here so this basically we have done the first project that we have downloaded the fastq file we have read the fastq file we don't have to rely on any other tools such as fastqc or multiqc something like that but we have done everything in r and we know that what we are doing uh, for for determining the quality of the fastq files okay so this is it for now uh, later on uh, maybe I, I will start um, doing the analysis for desec 2 rna sequencing analysis uh, i just want to give you an overview how the quarto documentation work and how easy it is to write uh, the codes over here and you can share this html file to anybody to your uh, colleagues to your students to your professor and also even uh, you can publish it as a supplementary file where you load all the codes over here and uh, of course you don't want to show these kind of options you just want to show only um, the commands that you have done uh, except for the plots you can show the plots as well code and the plot and uh, rest of these packages loading the packages you don't need to uh, show them you can just set it up as echo false and it will not be uh, display okay so that's it for now uh, i'll see you uh, in the next tutorial for the de set to rna sequencing package hope you like it if you like it please subscribe to my channel and this is pritam signing off